There we go. We're looking at vignettes today. Vignettes are? Vignettes are when you have only part of the background and the artist has purposefully not finished it. And so when you have a single subject, is that a vignette or? Single or subject as in like one character or what? I'll show you. Yeah, show me an example. Yeah, you can call that a vignette. Okay. I thought it only had to have one subject in it. Not, that has people and, play, and a place, but it, vignette means it just hasn't got much of a background, right? Yeah, it's like the background fades out or isn't complete. So then it's just like a piece, a piece of a puzzle. It almost looks like an unfinished puzzle or like the background just kind of fades out. That okay. can be called a vignette. Vignette, okay. So, it's a little bit easier than a full-fledged background and not many of us did our homework. I don't think any of us did our homework, so we can go ahead and just do one of these for practice and then if um, you have your story, you can do one based on your own story. So I think this one's actually the best because we were doing columns last week and it'll be a good review. So I'm going to grab a piece of practice paper. Oops, that's not practice paper. I think you spell vignette, V-E-N. Oh, that's a good question. Let's ask the internet. Alexa, how do you spell vignette? V-I-G-N-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. Ooh. I know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I never would guess that. <laughs> oh, but first, let's take a look. Horizon line. So there's no horizon line drawn here, but we know that when we can see the top of the stairs, they have to be underneath the horizon line. And as the stairs back here go up, we cannot see the tops of them. So whichever one is the flattest top space, whoops, that pencil doesn't work. Probably right above her, right at her hem line, huh? Yes. Very good. Right about out here, her hand line is the horizon line. That's why we can see the tops of the stairs below it, but not the tops of the stairs above it. So when we're doing our little practice piece, I'm going to keep that in mind here. Let's put my papers side by side. So we're going to choose our borders. You can do a square or a rectangle, doesn't really matter. I folded my paper in half, so I'm only doing one that's maybe four inches tall. If you happen to have a colored pencil handy, I like making my horizon line in a different color, just so I remember it's an important line. If not, you just put a little HL over on the side, reminds you that's the horizon line. Then we've got some columns and they're not going perfectly straight up and down because this is kind of a gravelly or not gravelly like a ruins where the stonework has fallen apart and stuff. So we're just going to throw in some lines doesn't matter if they're perfectly vertical. And then one closer for this guy right here. And then we'll decide where we want the cap to be. And I'm thinking about there. So I can erase any lines that go beyond the cap line. We're going to turn this into a very skinny rectangle that is wider than the pillar. Oops, I forgot one thing. The rectangle is going to line up with that corner line right there. 
So we'll have one piece on that side, one piece on that side. Don't want it, that other little piece slanting up or anything? No, it's pretty flat from what I can tell. Okay. And then we're going to lightly make a little pyramid by going to all three spots. And we'll put a circle on top. Then we'll do that again on the other side. We've got another pillar over here. Two lines and then one more line closer. If you want them to look more broken down and crumbling, you can tilt the top line for the pyramid part. Tilt that one going that way. Tilt that one down that way. And same thing. Little pyramid. This one's probably going to be a little bit taller because it's closer to us. Closer is bigger. Closer is taller. And then we've got our old friend, the stairs. So we're going to go ahead and draw a line in between these two pillars. And we're going to start with this railing here because we know the stairs will come under it. I'm going to put this wedge going up this way. We don't have to go all the way to the top because our character is going to be there and then there's this white space in the back so not even going to connect but we do need a thickness to show how tall it is and then one more line to show how wide it is stairs i hate stairs <laughs> wacky on me. There are only three of them, so hopefully we can get through it. <laughs> so we're going to just real lightly sketch out where we want these stairs to be. Do those three right there. And they each have a little bit of an overhang on these steps. So we're going to put skinny rectangles right on the edges here. And then one more line, any place that we have this little corner, we need the line going across. Then we need to place our character somewhere. I didn't put my pillars as wide as this one. So if I put my character here, they're going to get covered up by the pillar. I got to find a spot. Um, in between. Forgive me. Wait, are we supposed to do our, are we going to do our own thing? Or are we supposed to follow with you? This one was just to follow me to get warmed up. But if you're already warmed up and you want to work on your own, that's fine. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and erase out a spot here for my stick figure to go, my little person. My stairs look 
like a bunch of lines. Your stairs look like a bunch of lines. I'm gonna hold it up for a second. <sighs> Let's see, bunch of lines. Your top one is the best one because it's got the most space. Yeah. It just got real short at the bottom. So I would just go ahead and erase the bottom step and just make two steps. Got it. Less stairs is always great, right? <laughs> Something happens in my brain when we talk about a stare, and then I just can't figure it out for some reason. It does get complicated. There's just too many different things and angles and measurements and slopes. Shouldn't be complicated. <laughs> This and we got the line at the bottom of the stair. Then we've got this that goes to the bottom of the stair. I'm going to put two little feet right on the step where I want my character to stand. Oh, they might be leaning a little bit. I'll bring this foot over. And I'll just put in a general stretched out bell shape, kind of rounded on top and flatter on the bottom. We'll just connect those feet right up into that clothing there. And then I'm going to draw just a little point back here for the shield being carried by the other hand. And then the hand that we can see, we've got another sword. I'll just have the handle sticking out there. And we need the guard in front. And then I'm going to draw a fairly thick blade just because I don't want it to accidentally merge in with my stair railing. And this is just practice anyway. So our sword can be a little chubby. can start putting some of the vegetation right on top of our pillars. These little squiggly lines. Just bouncing that pencil tip around. If 
put some other shapes for some different plants down at the bottom, little ovals. And then for the column bases, since they're below the horizon line, we'll be able to see the top. We'll be able to see the thickness here. I'm going to give myself two lines, and the second line wraps around. Same thing on this guy. I have my one line that stops the pillar. And then my second line is going to go around. We'll give it some height. And we can stick in some more plants growing out of these bases or around, in front of, alongside of. And to really give it the feeling of a vignette, we're going to take our stair railing behind our character and let it fade away. Fade out. Swish. We can do the same thing on the ground if we just follow the same line as the pillar bases. And give ourselves some guidelines for some stones. If I'm drawing a stone nice and dark and then I let it fade on the edges, just lift my pencil up. That'll show that edge being blurry and purposefully unfinished. You know, I was drawing this background, but I just mm -hmm. realized, oh wait, this isn't the type of background we're supposed to be drawing today. As long as it fits your story, it's fine. I mean, this one here, this one's just practice. So it doesn't matter what you draw. Yeah, because I was making an entirely new thing for like a scene in my head. And I was like, oh, wait, no, I'm not supposed to do that. Well, we can go over doing stories and stuff. I typed up a clear sheet because then when I look at my notes from last week, I'm like, what is this mess? <laughs> How do you guys learn anything from this? <laughs> I learned a lot. Give <laughs> So I typed it up all nice and nice and nice. We can review that. If you want to try to give your little figure an eye or a hairstyle, you can try, but it's pretty tiny. The idea for my thing is like, uh, somewhere in the comic, I'm thinking, like, she finds, like, a sea monster, and it turns out, like, the, you know, I talked about, like, there's, like, like, and good, well, not necessarily good, but good king, and then the evil king who wants to take over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one idea I have is, like, you know, somewhere around his like lair he's got like this giant cave where mm -hmm. he uses like magical chains to control control sea monsters that'd be cool yeah and anyway it's like i want to try this is like oh what if this is like when she goes off and like sees like the sea monster or whatever you could do that you could definitely do that Yeah, I feel like the one thing it is, it's hard to, like, convey size when you're in a cave. Oh, let me switch my camera over here. Hey, that came out pretty good. Yeah. 
and stairs. <laughs> stairs, though, huh? We'll just have to do more. We'll just have to practice more. I know. That's what I was going to say. I need to do stairs a hundred times. <laughs> Furby stairs, regular stairs. Uh, All dance. stairs. Huh? With panda stairs, my worst enemy. All right, thumbnail sketches. Here it is, all nice and typed up. How to plan wow, an awesome story that. piece. Holy cow. So, what is our story? What is happening? Here is a great sentence for you to build your character, action, and place all together. Your character is our doing something in a place. That's it. It's super simple. Somebody doing something in a place. So, let's take a look at an example. Zoom in so you don't have to retain your writing. A princess is kissing a disgruntled frog in the royal garden. So we've got our character, we've got the character doing something, and we've got a place. It's as easy as that. A well-dressed cat is sipping a latte in a cafe. The fairy is putting on her shoes in her room. So first we just need character action, place. But then you ask yourself, what if I can't think of a character action in place? That's where you choose a scene from a favorite book, movie, TV show, video game, other source, and you put that character, action, and location into that same sentence. So you can do it. Mario is throwing a fireball at Bowser in Bowser's castle. We see that all the time in every single video game, right? Beauty is dancing with the beast in the ballroom. Captain Jack Sparrow is swinging uncontrollably from a rope on a pirate ship, right? These are all just scenes from the movies or the video games. So when do we make it our own? We just change things. Instead of Mario, it's now a ninja. Instead of Bowser, it's now some evil monster of our own creation. Instead of Bowser's castle, it can be a Japanese castle. Instead of beauty, it can be a little girl. And instead of the beast, she can be dancing with her dad. And instead of the castle, it could be in the kitchen. If you drew a little girl dancing with her dad in the kitchen, nobody's going to say, you copied Beauty and the Beast. You're doing copyright infringement. No, nobody knows. It's all good. You just change up some things. You can change Jack Sparrow to an explorer, swinging uncontrollably from a vine instead of a rope, and he's now in the jungle instead of a pirate ship. Super easy, right? Super easy. Then, got your story. Yes? How, how do I get this? How do you get this? How can you? I will, let's see, where can I post it? Well, I wondered if I could just, I wonder if I could just take a picture, but it gets kind of blurry when you do the whole page, huh? I do the whole page? Um, after I stop recording, let me give you my email and then email me and ask for it. I'll give you the file and then you can just print one. <laughs> how about that? Got it. Or take a picture of it and um, I'll text oh, you. I can just, yeah, I could just text it to you too, huh? Thumbnail sketches. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So once you have your story, you are ready to start sketching your options. And here's how it's going to go. You are going to write down your story sentence at the top of your paper to stay on track. We artists love to think of new ideas. Instead of following one idea, we love to just think of all the other things we could be doing right now. So to keep on target, write your story sentence at the top of your paper, which is going to be your character doing a thing in a place. Let's do that now, in fact. Where's my paper? Oh, my story. Let's see, I say I can't think of a story. I'm just out of ideas. So I go, okay, what have I watched recently or read recently? And I really liked it. Oh, I've been reading Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell. And I like it when they're doing magic. So I could say that I want Jonathan Strange, I'll just say Jonathan, performing magic for Mr. Norrell. But I don't want to copyright infringe, so I got to change Jonathan to somebody else. I like drawing ladies better than men, so instead of Jonathan, it's going to be mm, maybe, a, maybe a witch. 
performing magic instead of for Mr. Noro for for cat. Now I've got my idea. So I have written my idea on my paper. You should do the same. Let me know when you guys are done. I don't want to rush you. I'm going to cheat and look back at the thumbnails. <laughs> <laughs> are we talking about the story that we had with the columns and stuff? Or are we talking about... No, this is just a brand new one for a vignette. So not, a, not our character development that we were talking no, about. No, no. You don't have to do that. If you okay. want to, if you want to, you can, but you don't have to. So what's your sentence, Michaela? Yeah, I'm thinking about just giving out the new background, because honestly, if I do multiple, neither of them is going to get done. That's okay, my logic. The one that you were working on before? Yeah. And what was that one? Oh, uh, hold on. Hold on, I'll show you. Um... I mean, what's your sentence going to be that uh, describes that drawing? My main idea is like, um, Celia looks out to the underwater kingdom with awe. So you're with awe. awe. Yeah, like with awe. Sorry, I didn't make that clear. Wizard is looking at underwater kingdom. Oh, uh, yeah. With awe. That's you have a challenge here because either her back is going to be toward us, which is hard to see the awe on her face, or... I just, like, I know, just looking at a pretty kingdom. So we don't have to see it with awe, okay. Just looking at an underwater kingdom and we'll imagine that the underwater kingdom is so awesome. We are all in awe. Yeah, she, I imagine she was like raised in a coastal town, so it's like she would always hear like legends about this place. So she would be surprised to find it exists. No, she's not surprised it exists. Like she knows it exists. It's just really hard to get to because of sea monsters. How do you keep all these stories straight in your mind, Michaela? Holy cow, you're full of them. <laughs> what do you mean? To be a writer, man. Just write, write, write. Okay, mine is Mickey Mouse dancing for coins. So I changed Mickey Mouse to Max. Mm -hmm. Then I put oh, him in a top house, top, top hat. But I still kept the dancing. Is that okay for yep. mm -hmm. Okay. So Max dancing in a top hat for coins or for something else? For treats. For treats. For dog treats. For dog treats. Oh, I should probably mention that, Max is a dog. Okay, so now I have your sentences. I will keep you to them. If you try to change your mind now, too bad. Yeah, too bad. I have proof, that's right. <laughs> so now we're going to move on to number two, sketch out the borders to show the final shape of your paper or image. So I don't think, Michaela has borders? Do you have borders on your image? Do I have what? Borders. Do I know if the final one is going to be a square, a rectangle, a circle? What's your last image going to be? Or your paper size? Square. Square? Okay, that sounds confident. <laughs> so you can sketch your borders around your thumbnail that you already have. For the rest of us, we can decide if we want it to be portrait, meaning tall, landscape, so vertical, it means dynamic, and horizontal is more peaceful, and square is more stable. That's right. Yeah, I do take notes. That's right. When I need them, though, is the hard part. Yeah. So a dancing dog isn't That's peaceful, cool. not really dynamic, and it's not really stable. So maybe dancing a... Dancing is pretty dynamic. Dynamic. Okay, vertical then. 
yeah especially if he's on two legs and they're doing a the little you know yeah yeah, that's not yeah then i'd say you probably need space vertically so which performing magic for her cat uh, probably not the stable one because it's, it's a vertical it's an action yeah i mean you can pick anyone for any anything but i'm saying if you want to get the most out of it let's say that then you can follow those shapes. So I'm going to do that one. Third, we're going to set up a horizon line. Have you done that, Michaela? We're going to do that. Set up a horizon line, meaning anything above this horizon line, you cannot see the top of objects. Anything below the horizon line, you can see the top of objects. So if you want to see the top of those rocks, they need to be below the horizon line. If you want to see the bottom of a fish, it's going to be above that horizon line. So let's get my different colored marker just so that I keep it straight in the mind. And you can plop it right in the middle to start off with. And we're going to number four, place your characters on the focal area. So we were talking about that tic-tac-toe. You lightly sketch a tic-tac-toe on your borders. You know, I think I actually need to copy it, this, and like to put it to a new tab because, you know, I've yeah. had it, yeah, because like I have this in like a big folder full of like school stuff, but honestly, I should have had multiple folders. I mean, yeah, sure, do anyway. what you gotta do. Plus, I don't like messing up my originals sometimes when I want to just like experiment and I want to make sure I have like a backup just so I can go back to it just in case. So I've got my tic-tac-toe and on one of these intersections is where I'm going to place the face of my character. So I have a witch performing magic and a cat. So I have to decide if the cat is going to be a little taller or if the witch is going to be taller. I think the cat's going to be on a bookcase or something. So I'm going to put the cat up here. Look at my amazing cat. Remember these are just doodles. Wow. Cat. And I'll put my witch down here, looking up at cat. Looking at a thing, using her wand. Okay, so Betsy, mm -hmm. hey, can I screen share really quick and ask if my character do you think is in a good enough place? Sure. Well, let's see it. Okay, and share. Looks pretty good. What I'm thinking of in my mind is that we don't want the edge of the bubble to be too close to the kingdom because then it'll make a tangent. But this rock that is like the one that she's standing on is kind of close to the kingdom. So either that needs to overlap or get farther away. But if you put her farther away, that means people are going to look at the city unless it hurt. I don't know if that bothers you or not. I could just like make it bigger. Are you doing that, Betsy, or is Mi Michaela doing I'm doing it, that. me. Oh. Yeah, see, this is looking better already. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Better, care, better like look at the character, that's cool. Yeah, and the, the kingdoms in the distance, that, that's more interesting. Yep, I like it. Yeah, okay, I'll stop sharing now. Okay, good. After you've put in your characters, you're going to doodle in a couple of environmental things. So is my witch inside or outside? I didn't say. Oh, you guys didn't catch me. Look, I have no location. <laughs> <laughs> so I got to stick that in. For her cat, where? Outside, inside. I'll say inside. In her house.
So now I can just look around my house and go, what's in a house? Windows, bookshelves, tables, lamps, pencil boxes, blankets, all kinds of things. So I need my cat to be sitting on something, maybe just a little cat tower. Cat lovers know about those things. So a cat tower there. Maybe a bookcase over here. Maybe bottom of a painting up here. We want to try to have something. Oh wait, we're doing vignettes. Oh my gosh. Not touching the borders. <laughs> Gonna fade out this background. See, sometimes I get so into it I forget what we're doing. Hey, at least you have an idea. <laughs> <laughs> after you do your little doodle, you're going to do it again. Repeat it until you have four options to 10 options to choose from. Michaela's got a advantage on us because she can copy and paste. And okay. <laughs> Just tweak things. So on this next one, I'm just going to use my horizontal one, put my horizon line higher. So that means I can see the top of the cat tower. My cat sitting there. And my witch down here. Painting her magic wand. There's number two. Oh, whoops, I need to put in some kind of you background. Changed your, you changed your um, thingy too, huh? Not only the horizon, but your... Oh, the orientation? Yeah, I changed it to landscape. Just to try it. Sometimes you think something isn't going to work, so you don't try it, but, you know, try it. Get some proof that it doesn't work. <laughs> The square one too, I'll just stick in a horizon line, maybe lower this time. If it's low, that means I won't be able to see the top of the cat tower. I'll see the bottom side of it. This is your focal point. The horizon line is in the middle of your vocal point, right? Horizon line doesn't have anything to do with the vocal point for this particular project. So the vocal, so the vocal point is tic-tac-toe on whatever shape you have. Yes. Okay, I thought it was with the horizon line in the middle. Nope, that's why I usually do it in a different color because otherwise I get confused between my tic-tac-toe lines and my horizon line. But no, but I mean, I thought the horizon line had to be in the middle of that tic -tac. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, no, it doesn't have to. That's just going to decide. Can you see the top of it? Can you see the bottom of it? Oh, it's lower. You can't see the top of things. If it's in the middle, you can't no, see oops. the top of things too much. Okay, so let's put it. And what's nice is just by changing the shape three times, you've already got three thumbnails. You just have to do one more to meet the minimum. I didn't even change the posing. I didn't change the positions. I didn't flip it so that the cat's on the left and the witch is on the right. Nothing. All I had to do was change those things. I already got three.
I forgot to open the gate for my gardeners. I'll be right back, okay? Okay. Okay. Well, this one seems kind of squishy. I think I need a bigger paper. One, two, three. I got one, two, three. Okay. Square. Now, what did you say about the vocal point? You want your character's face or something of interest, like what they're doing, to be on one of the intersections. Oh, okay. Oh, I bet you can I show you the thing again? Sure. Okay, give Thank me you. a second. Looking good, but why is there only one? One what? One thumbnail. One sketch. I don't know, I was putting all my eggs in one basket. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got two. Here's here's one. Where is it? There's one. Oh wait, uh Michaela has to stop sharing her screen next. Oh. I mean, one looks good, but I have nothing to compare it to, so I can't tell you if it's your best idea because I don't have anything to compare it to. <laughs> okay. So here's one. Let me get you up here. There's one. There's one dancing. I got it. Yeah, it's cute. On the vocal point, though, I think. And here's 
two, and I didn't have them on the vocal point. That's but it's okay. kind of the same. The only thing that's different I made was that bigger. Mm -hmm. So I do something. Totally. Well, I already like the first one better, the vertical. The vertical? Okay. Format. Yeah, because he just looks more color, more entertaining. Okay, and then this one, if the horizon line is high, then I could show the top of his hat, right? Yep. Top of his hat and more of the floor. Okay, more of the floor. And the top of the hat has to stay below the horizon line, yeah. Okay. So if I want a. Oh man, Betsy, you know, I think I'm a little worried. A little worried about what? I just realized I don't remember that one drawing that I took forever on that, uh, you know, I made for the art show that never got put up in the art show. Uh, the one you printed yourself? Yeah. What was that of? I can't remember. Which like one. a girl in a pup one. Anyway, I was going to say, I don't, I'm a little worried that I may have just, it's gone. I can't find it. You can't find it? You may have deleted it? Yeah. Uh-oh. Wouldn't be the first time, though. I've done it many times where I'm like, where is that drawing? And I remember, oh, it was on that hard drive that crashed, or it was on that computer that died. Yeah. Now, if I want, to, I'll show you. Mm-hmm. Here. Dancing like crazy thing. Let's see how would I make him dance from behind? Is it looks kind of odd. Dance from behind. Let me take a look. Uh, I don't know that I would pick behind just because you can't see his expression as well. Right. But if you wanted to have him turn or something, we could do oh, that. Oh, that's a good idea. Turn, huh? Let's get. If I put his face up in the air, the horizon line. Mm-hmm. Do I have to I have to put it below the horizon line, right? Um uh, I don't think it would matter too much on it. It depends on if you want to see the top of his top hat or not, maybe. Okay. So like let's say you got your borders and you want to have him like turning around. I'd put a little tilt on the body since he's dancing. Okay. And then put the head here. 
nose and like lifting his top hat or something. Yeah. Whoops, he's gonna have spaghetti arms, but. That's okay, it's just a thumbprint, right? Yeah, just a little thumbnail, get the idea down, see if we like the idea. Maybe have the hat going down. Yeah, it's just a little harder to show that he's dancing from yeah. behind. Yeah, or taking a pee pee in the can. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was actually working on a piece earlier today where I was supposed to have a girl like crouch down, Ooh. just look like she was having a bowel movement and had to go on the ground. <laughs> I said, "Well, we got to change that." <laughs> <Herk>. <laughs> So it happens. Well, it well the next one. All right. Or if you have any uh, references of cartoon characters dancing, no harm in choosing their pose and taking some inspiration. Maybe holding a cane. Do, 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 do. like an alien when I did with this arm coming out of stomach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so for you, the horizon line is probably going to be either in the middle or lower. Oh, that's cute. I like that one. Just because if you have flooring that you're going to see part of, since it's a vignette, you won't see all of it. Yeah. If you put it too high, I was kind of playing around with it. If you put it too high, you have to get into some pretty severe overlapping. Yeah. You're like really looking down at him where I think anything that's kind of one third or halfway or below seems to work out I better. I like that first one though. That's cute. That one's cute? All right. Steal yeah. it. Steal like an artist. I know. Steal like an artist. But this one portrays the dancing more. The uh, last one you just did. What, the This one? Uh-huh. Yeah, I think that one looks a little more like dancing than the rest of them. I think it's because they're too straight up and down. Mm -hmm. When you're dancing, you gotta move. Uh. I feel like the, the bottom right one is the best one, in my opinion. Yeah, that's what we were saying, too. Wow, it's already past six. Okay. Let's go back to mine. I just got to this one. I kind of like this one. Where she's going to be using her magic to make kibble appear and fall right into the bowl. Nice, yeah. Yeah, that'll be cute. And the window in the background. Yeah, I'm going to have the window in the background only partially done so we can make it a vignette. I think I might have to give myself more space just kind of around them so I can show a little bit more of the background and have it fade out. So I can have the tiles fade out like we did with the stones. Maybe have a pile of books or something back here that fades out. Yeah, so I think I'll go with that one. So let's pretend we've got our best thumbnail. We're ready to move on. I get my bigger piece of paper. No, oh, not that. Let's use this one. I am stealing like an artist. I like All right. The only bad thing is it doesn't look the same. <laughs> That's kind of why they say it's okay to take some uh, some inspiration from other people because you're not going to be able to make it the exact same anyway. Yeah. So I've got my thumbnail that I like and I've got my big piece of paper. First thing I'm going to do is put on my tic-tac-toe so that I know where my focal point goes. Very, very lightly. You might not be able to see it on camera. It's going to be so light. If I darken the camera. So blue. Tic tac toe the other way. And I know that my witch's face is going to go right by that intersection.
Here, I'm going to tilt her hat back this time. Now, what are we doing? I'm showing you how you go from little one to big one. Got it. So we take our big piece of paper, start laying in those same tic-tac-toe lines so we can get an idea of where our character is going to be on the paper. And you basically doodle it the same way as you did when you were thumbnailing, it's just on a larger scale. There's going to be my witch with her curly toed shoes. And my horizon line I'm not going to do in marker because I want to be able to erase it. So I put it about halfway. So I'll just put a little HL to remind myself that's what that line is. And then the cat is on this vertical, but not on the horizontal. So I know down by the witch's feet is going to be the kitty. I think I'll have him standing before I had him sitting, but he should be interested in this kibble falling from the sky. Maybe even looking up. I should have figured this all out in my thumbnail, but I didn't. I should have done 10 more. That's okay. You can change your mind sometimes, just not the whole story. So there's that. And then I've got his little food bowl in front of him. It's below the horizon line, so I know I'll be able to see the inside. She needs to extend her arm forward. I'm just working in stick people forms right now, holding her magic wand. Let's see, how do you hold the magic wand? Boop, boop, boop. Kibble up here, kibble up here. Now you're selling a Michaela. <laughs> <laughs> the stories, the stories are coming. The stories are coming out. So we've got a magic wand. Wait, did you say my name? I'll say you I said I was sounding like you with my stories and my uh, wishes and my living out my art. Yep, the more you draw, the more you start talking to yourself, acting out your drawings. Okay. Yeah, and I'm trying to do a thing like you said, do more thumbnails. Although, be it, I think that kind of was what the main thing I was going to do. Like, I think it was sort of like, uh, that was the idea I was going with, but, you know, not completely finalized, but you get it. Yeah, but like when, I mean, you don't, like thumbnails are optional, but the benefit of doing it is when you ask me, is this good? I don't know, because I don't know what else you can do. Okay. That's, that's all this is. So when you look at these, I mean, one of the very first things you said when you saw four of these dogs together was, hey, I like that one the best. That means good, it's gonna go. If I only had that one, and I said, is that a good drawing of a dog? You might've said, yeah, that's a good drawing. Like, go ahead, do that one. But because I had a better one, you were able to compare. But yeah. if you're like, eh, I know I'm good. I know what I wanna draw, then just go for it. Not this girl. I am in training. <laughs> You're in training. In training. The only other idea I have is like, I don't know, like her walking in a street. Would fish people even have a street? That's one of the, the question. The many questions that, that arise. Question. When you, you might look at Little Mermaid again. See if they had anything. Anyway, basically, like just walking. Like, you know, walking around town and, and yeah. like just random mer people are staring at her. Cause it's I, I feel like I owe you because I did a couple of dogs for Stephanie. Let's see what I can do with wizard looking at underwater city. 
Three seconds or less, you'll have it. Three seconds or less, yeah. <laughs> Let's try a panoramic view. Let's say this was a movie. Well. Let's say this was on a regular piece of paper. Let's say it was on Instagram. <laughs> Right, let's say you want to be super creative and you put it in a bubble. <laughs> Is that too ridiculous? Okay, we won't do that one. Let's say we do just another, another rectangle, that's fine. So first, in this movie view, I get my tic-tac-toe. Where did I put horizon line first? I forget which step I said first. Which lets you guys know the steps aren't really important. The order. Let's stick that horizon line in there. So now we know that if her rock is over here and we want her to be on a third and she's tiny because we want the kingdom to look huge and she's in a bubble. And in the kingdom, I forgot the exact shapes, but we'll pretend it's a big scene. It's not, it's not from the final, so you might as well do it. Yeah, so I'm just gonna doodle a little thing. And then there's like schools of fish swimming around and they get bigger as they come toward the camera and smaller as they go away from the camera. And there's like some cool coral in the front here. We do a thing and we go, oh, that's cool. And you could just that's do that one. Cool. Let's try it. Maybe vertical is better. Maybe. If we have a nice tall paper, you know, the benefit of that, we can make the castle so tall. And it's going to look so majestic because it's so tall. And then your character might get too small. You might go, oh, I want my character to be bigger. Well, then we'll know this is not the right idea. All right, but now you got two and you can look at both of them and go, oh, I like that one better or I like that one better. Which one do you like better, one or two? I like one better. Yeah, I like one better too. Oh, we got some ones. Okay, so maybe a square is not the way to go. Maybe we need another wide one. Maybe not that wide. Maybe not letterbox. Maybe we'll try it just regular wide. <laughs> I don't know what regular oh, that's wide funny. is. <laughs> well, we'll try that. So let's say you want your character, because she's important to the story, to be larger. And she's standing on a rock and she's very tall, I remember. And like six foot seven. Yeah. Like, is the bubble important enough that you would want to see the whole bubble? You, it, I don't know. Let's say yes. Let's say that's one of the things you cannot compromise on. That's your deal breaker. Got to see this whole bubble. I'm just pretending. Super tall and lanky. So she is in her bubble looking at the kingdom. So I want her to be important, but I want her to be looking at the kingdom. Maybe it's lower. Maybe there's some tall spires. And maybe there's those merfolk swimming around here on invisible highways. And maybe there's some like big kelp forest in the back. Yeah, I like your idea of like putting stuff on like the cliff she's she's like on mm -hmm. it makes it a lot a bit more interesting it makes it like clear that she's underwater i think yeah oh i thought she uh -huh. was underwater. <laughs> oh yeah there you go yeah that's nice geez they all have good points i like the the tower in the back of number two mm -hmm. I like the depth perception in number one mm -hmm. and number three i like the fishies well, there you go. So then you go, okay, I like this from number three, I like this from number two, and I like the depth of number one. And you do one more and try to combine all those things. So we'll oh. go back to letterbox. But we like this big, tall castle. So we'll say that one's big and tall back there. And she's going to be small down here. But this is going to be close to the camera, big corals. So that we get that sense of depth and those tiny, tiny little fishes that get bigger and bigger and bigger. Maybe a few merfolk swimming around. Kelp forest. Maybe sticking a whale just for size. <laughs> right? Yeah. There's a new idea that just came forth. Yeah, that's cool. 
Okay, number four is my favorite. <laughs> that whale, huh? That whale <laughs> changed yeah, your because it gave, it gave a perspective. Is that the right word? Yeah, where you're seeing like how big things are in relation to one another. Because that's a good point. How am I going to know that she's six foot seven unless I have a fish that I'm familiar with? I feel like it's with. not so important that it's like oh, okay. not a need to know. Okay, good. So then I don't have to worry about that. See, if you don't have to worry about that, then don't worry about it. But that's the only reason we do thumbnails. So now you can look at them and you go, oh, hey, I like that idea. Oh, like I'll that take idea. a picture. Sure. Call real quick. Uh, just brighten my screen there. There we go. Taking pictures, taking pictures, and okay, I took pictures. Thank you. You're welcome. The only problem is you're going to look at this tomorrow or a week from now and go, what is this? What is this mess? <laughs> oh, no, I look like a <laughs> get it. Sometimes I get it better than when I'm trying to figure it out while we're doing it. Okay, got my dancing dog. All right, let's take a look. Oh, look how cute he is dancing. Oh, like a bad boy. <laughs> so, the treat thing, the where he's dancing for treats, uh -huh. below the horizon line, way below. Yep mostly the top. Yeah. So then the bottom of the bowl, you have to curve it too. Okay. Unless it's like one of those like cartoony things. Yeah, like the black and white cartoons. That's what it reminds me of. I think Dexter's Laboratory did something like that. I don't know. Oh. Well, let's see, what time is it? 6.20. So we just got 10 minutes left. We didn't get to drawing again. Oh well. We learned some things, right? We, we, did hope. Drawing. we drew, drew our dra brains out. <laughs> Dogs and mermaids. And Dogs and mermaids and witches and cats. And yeah, we drew a plimpton. I'm going to try to get this one at least drawn by next week so we can have a vignette for our art show. Are we going to have our show? I think it's going to be digital. Uh, we'll put it on Facebook or something like that. We'll have a collection of everybody's art that they've done on Zoom. That's a good idea. Maybe I should. Because there's just Kristen, you and I, and Michaela, and now Julie. Yeah. And Karen a few times. Mm hmm So you can get quite a good collection, huh? Do we just yeah, I think so. Well, I think I got a tangent there when I put the collar on. Ran into his arm. Oh, but you knew it and you spotted it. No, it's amazing. Even old. Didn't even know what a tangent was a few months ago, right? <laughs> and if I did know, I forgot. <laughs> I remembered again. That's what you have to keep doing with me. Yeah, that's how all learning works, I think. Oh, this was fun. Oh, I'm glad. Sometimes I think, oh, are we just going over the same stuff too much? Nope. But as long as it's fun. We haven't done cheese and cake for a long time. Well, yeah, you guys had all gotten so good. We were skipping warm ups and getting <laughs> to the. But you know, the, with the anatomy, I had forgotten the anatomy, so I'm glad we. I was thinking, I hope they go over it. And they, there you go, you're doing it. There we go. Because you forget. Whoops. If you don't use it, you lose it. That's true. Oh, there's your notes. Thank you. You're welcome. I did it before I forgot. <laughs> That's what I was doing too. I had to do it before I forgot. <laughs> now I want to save these. That's all the notes. Wasn't there another one? Yeah, there should be a second one. Oh, there it is. Shut up, Stephanie. Give her time. All right. Yeah. <laughs> no.
Hey Betsy, how do I make the tail? Does that look like it's position where it should be? Let's see, let's see your tail. Uh, I would do it a little bit higher or curve it so it goes. Okay. And maybe up. not such a long tail, huh? Yeah, because you have to think it's connected. It's connected to the spine. Right. So you were drawing a simplified skeleton on the inside. I think it would either. Let's see. Let me draw it. It's easier when I just draw Maybe it. I <laughs> Maybe I should even put a tail since you thought. I thought it would add motion. You know. No, I think it's good to have a tail. But right now you've got the body and then the tail kind of coming out that way. Okay. But if it connects to the spine, then that's going to be too severe of a turn. So I'm just saying if you curve it a little more. And maybe a little lower. And maybe a little lower, then I think it'll look like it connects to his spine a little bit more than the way you have it right now. Thank you. You're very welcome. I'm stealing that too, by the way. <laughs> Well, I bet. Have you heard of that um, thing that's going around, um, the six fan art challenge? Yeah, I've been seeing people do it, and I keep thinking, oh, maybe I should do it. I'm like, oh, I don't want people picking my fan art for me. Maybe if I pick them myself, I'll do it. I feel like the other, someone else picking out is most of the point. True, but if they start picking characters that I don't like, then I don't want to have to do <laughs> characters I don't like. <laughs> If they steal like an artist, you know? Yep. Uh, a raccoon. Maybe I'll turn him into a raccoon. Nope, nope. Got to stick with my sentence. Make it a cat. Cat, that's cute. I hope my tortoise isn't giving the gardeners trouble. Makes me nervous when I hear the equipment stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, we only have four minutes left. So if you got to go run out and check that, this is a good time to wrap it up. Okay, I want to watch what you're doing. I'm just filling in my cap a little bit more. I'll bend that leg. A more interest. There we go. That's better, huh? Are you going to do the fan art challenge, Michaela? No, uh, probably not. Probably I don't not. know. It's like my main thing is like I kind of want to do a version of that, but instead of like drawing actual established characters, I just draw people's OCs. Oh, that'd be fun. Yeah, because you know I always wanted to do that, and I figured you know six is a good like number to to go with like at a mm -hmm. time so so um betsy mm -hmm. if i put his hat on his head i can't have the ear line touching the hat line right i because that's a tangent so i need to curve it or something i curved it a little Let's yeah see right. you can uh, go ahead and make the hat a little wider if you want so it doesn't flow in that's because it won't fall over his head unless it's gigantic, but it can be a little wider. Good idea. That's very good. That's an advanced uh, tangent right there that you spotted. An advanced tangent? Now you got me messed up. Because <laughs> <laughs> normally when we're looking at those things, it's two things touching each other, like butting up against each other. Uh huh. But you were looking at something that's running from one object into another object. Oh, okay. So that's a little more advanced. Okay. I see what you're saying. It's a little harder to spot. That's what I'm saying. You still got it. Good. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> well, tomorrow I'll bring, but today I was trainable. Yeah.
Now, when I put his arm behind him, I'm trying to foreshortened and all that. I made it shorter. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look. It, even though it's because it's behind him, but should have I made it longer? Let's take a look and see the one behind him. Oh, that one. Um, just have some overlapping lines. Let me show you on my paper. Because it would look, then there's that rule. Yes, your shortness is correct. Keep the shortness. Okay. But right now you have lines something like this. Right. If you show that this part of the arm is overlapping by just bringing in these lines, oh, it's getting closer, that's way far away. Like put in a little fur texture or something there. Yeah. So we can tell that it's overlapping. Okay. Little pause there. I forget what they look like, but there we go. Yeah, I got, I got the pause. But okay. that'll help us see that this is in front of this and then that's in front of that. You can also just make the connection to the body a little bit um, bigger. Got it. So that it's going, you know. Yeah. Yeah, the bigger, the bigger thingy. No. Bigger thing helps better? Yeah, I think so. Six thirty. You made it to the end. Good job, lady. Ooh, Ooh. good job, Betsy. <laughs> <laughs> Where should the mermaid be? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the dog doing standing in the air? Okay. Thank you, Betsy. You're very welcome. Well, that's what I think is the the benefit of these classes. If I just made videos, just lecturing, yeah. You now you don't get any help with your actual project. So I'm glad. Like, what did I do wrong with the cheese? I mean, that was basic. <laughs> I've known that from months ago, but no, nope. you needed to look at it to see. Yeah, what. exactly. Well, look at that. Yep, Are you going to but... raise your arm out from inside? What's that? Right there? Your elbow out from inside her sleeve there. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to raise that out. I just needed to know where the elbow was so I could put those wrinkles oh. in the right place. So you're going over it with a pin now? That's just pencil, a little darker. So that when I erase my lines, the darker ones won't erase as easy. I see. Okay. I guess you could think of it like inking with a pencil. Yeah, that's a good analogy. Nice. All right. I'm Thank gonna try you. to get this done by next week, but no pressure on you guys. Keep it fun. <laughs> Bye. 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 See you next time. Probably. <laughs> Whoop! Where's my button?